Okay, this is part three. In this one, I'm going to be doing the American Optical line, which goes back to the Henry Dezeng line. Started off with a guy named Henry Dezeng, who had been working on these kind of things since the 1800s. He, in 1895, he made the refractometer, which was like a giant telescope. The patient looks in one eye, in this and you adjust this dial, and it tells you how many diopters the patient's prescription is. 1895. In 1908, he applied for this, which looks kind of like a ferropter. He got the patent in 1909. And if I'm holding this up right, you know, it's close enough. This this is a quite an elaborate device that he invented. He's got this big star gear here that turns this channel of lenses all in a big circle. And he had Maddox rods, Risley prisms, he had sill on it. If you look at this patent, it, it looks like the first ferropter, but nobody ever made it. And it really has nothing to do with what they actually made, because the first thing that he made that looks like a ferropter is that one on top. And this one, that's the 570, this is the 560. Got an advertisement from 1918 out of that same jewelry store catalog, jeweler company. There's the 560, which is that one down there on the floor. And the 570, which is the same exact thing, only it has about uh, an optometer on each side for getting spheres. Let me show you what that looks like. Let me try to set this up here for you. This is the floor mount. I would raise it up normally, but it's so rusted I can't get it to go up. Uh, for the 560, this came out at the turn of the century, 1905, 6. Meyerowitz was selling these in his catalog in 1903. But if I were to look, compare that to the 570, that's the four headrest, just like the other one. Stevens ferrometer, Maddox rod, Risley prism, Risley prism, Maddox rod, Stevens ferrometer. They're exactly the same. See, so four headrest, four headrest. And you've got even the mechanism for, you put the trial lenses in here. This is basically a trial frame. The big thing in the late 18, 1800s was trial frames and trial lenses. You know all about them. Everybody knows. Bausch and Lohm came out with their first trial lens set in 1903. And American Optical had one in the, in the late 1880s. They were the first ones measured in diopters. Before then, they were measured in inch, inches. But you can see this is the same. What they have that makes it different is that... Here, let's, let's, let's play with this for a while. You've got four discs that are not interconnected at all. Four discs. The first one, they're in quarter after steps. Plano, plus 25, plus 50, plus 75, all the way up to plus 175. The second one is minus 25, minus 50. See what's going on there? Can you read? Minus 125. The third one is in two diopter steps, plus two, plus four, and the other way you go minus two. It goes up to minus eight and plus six. And then plus six, plus four, plus two. I don't know if I'm holding it in the light well enough. And on the back, you got the high power ones. Plano, well, is one eighth plus an eighth. Plus 8. Minus 150. Oh, plus 150. The plus 150 is for doing retinoscopy. And we got a minus 1 eighth and a minus 10. Keeping this thing a much higher power range. The design had that. You know, I'm going to put that on here. Um, I forgot to tell you that about the Shigan. It has the same thing. I didn't show that in the last video. Let me hang this up here. Oh, nice. Really, in the middle of a video, you're going to do this. Okay, thank you very much. The Chagon has the same thing on the back of theirs. See, look. Plus 6, minus 12, minus 6. It's the same, same idea. <clears throat> Increases the range to something so you can include all your patients. And that's they're both trial frames. 
So they both have, so you, no matter what the range is, you can put more trial lenses in here. And there's even a mechanism for turning that around. This thing has the same thing. That sold very, very well. Thousands of those. The Zeng made a mint with that. Uh, those have one-inch lenses. That's the biggest lenses ever on any fur out there. There's one-inch lenses up here. I guess he must have figured that's too big. Because in the 1920 model of the same thing, he shrank it down to three-quarters of an inch. Which made the whole thing smaller. you got a Grizzly prism on each side. A Maddox rod. No, this one doesn't have the Maddox rod. This one actually has cross cylinders. But here, I don't know if you can see that. Let me have it, see how it's lined up. The cross cylinder on this don't flip. It doesn't flip like a regular cross cylinder. You have to rotate it. And I, don't, I can't see how you can give an exam say, which is better, one or two? One or two? I think that's probably for the 14B. I don't think that's a real Jackson cross cylinder. I can't imagine giving a cuss, rotating it like that. But it's got white dots and red dots. Got a near point card. <clears throat> it's exactly the same as that one. Oh, it doesn't have a forehead rest. It's got rubber. Um, I don't know what to show you. It's got rubber eye guards instead of a forehead rest. This thing here is pretty funny. I put. That's a wall mount. This is taken from the book. That shows the 570. With a, with a wall mount. That's my near point card. Well, that was competing with the Wolf Ski Optometer and the Genothomic Refractor. These had cylinder. That's got cylinder and this has cylinder. That has no cylinder. So Henry de Zeng said, you can't do that. I'm Henry Dezeng. I've got to do something better than you. So he comes out with this. He did not use the patent that, that, that Michael Wolf used for the cylinder and axis. He did it the old-fashioned way. This is the way all the optometers in the 1800s did it. You have the cylinder, you have the lenses that turn in the circle. I'm going to take this off of here. This is the 584. That's the 574. This is the 584. Oh, i got to screw the whole thing out. <clears throat> This one was called the Ferrapter. Oh, really? In the middle of a video? All right. You can even see, if you pull that back, let me see if I can do it. See written right on there? If it's close enough, it says Ferrapter right on it. This is entirely different. These lenses are tiny. So instead of being one inch or three quarters of an inch, these lenses are only... These are like camera lenses. Look at those little lenses. Oh, this is so well made. This is the first for after. And you have to read them off and add them up in your head. Only you've got three rings instead of four. You got, well, no, you have four. One in the back with the knob. One near the back. One near the front. And one in the front with the knob. Read them off the back, plus 8, minus 10, just like the other one. They're in quarter doctors. Everything's the same. There's one le with, with, with a plus, which you can see. One with two doctor increments. What is this? Plus 12. This, this has prism in it. There actually isn't one for minus. But this is the sill. See how the axis of the cylinders is graded and, and, you, and you turn the whole thing around. This has, and you have to read them off there. Minus a quarter, minus 50, minus 75, minus one. And here you got 125, 250, 375, and five, just like, that's the standard pattern for everything. Even with this, that's what these have. That goes up to minus, on the cylinder part, in the middle. That goes up to minus six, and it has all the same. It's only got eight lenses. Four in the front, four in the back. Up to six. That was, oh, just to show you. This one's in mint condition, by the way. I don't think anybody ever used it. 
prismatic rod, Risley prism. They sold so many of these that the word Phoropter has become generic for the entire thing. Wall mount. These are all called Phoropters because of this one. This is a Foro optometer. 1925 American Optical bought. They bought Design. They bought the whole company. These guys. Henry Design was from upstate New York. He was from near Buffalo somewhere. And the factory that made these was in Buffalo. So when American Optical bought them, American AO was out of Massachusetts. When they bought Design, they left it in Buffalo. All these things were made in Buffalo. All of them. American Optical took the same thing. Very little difference, but they turned it upside down. This is the first, the first of the design line to hang from the top instead of being supported from the bottom. I'm going to put this back on just because I want to. Well. Yeah, I'll do it. Eh, maybe not. <clears throat> the um, American Optical Design, it's called the Wellsworth, which is the AO trademark, the Zeng, which is the Design trademark, Ferropter, which is the Design trademark. All the lenses are on the outside. I suppose so it can be easier to clean them. Same exact mechanism for cylinder. Grizzly prism, Maddox rods. No Jackson cross cylinders. You still got to do it the old-fashioned way. The thing that's really stupid about this one is that everything is in eighth diopter steps. I mean, this, this is just horrible. It's just, it, goes, it goes Plano 12, 25, 37, 50, and then back to Plano. Or 62, 75, oh, I'm sorry, 88. In the front, it goes all the way to 1. These here, like, for example, if you want to get a 1-diopter cell, you got 37 in the front and, and, and 63 in the back. The whole thing is in 8-diopter steps. 25, 37, 50, back to Plano. I just, I think American Optical was trying to sell more lenses to opticians. So they thought if they could convert everybody to 8th diopter steps, they'd sell more lenses. It didn't ever happen. Opticians never bought 8th diopter lenses. Even if optometrists prescribed 8th diopter prescriptions, the optician would say, which way do you want me to go, up or down? I don't have, I don't have 1.88. And then, right after that, some bad news was coming down the pike that the Probably the best Ferropter ever made was coming out. This one has uh, Stevens Ferrometer on it. So American Optical quickly retooled. You're rocking a boat over there. And made a much bigger version of that one. That's got Jackson Cross cylinders on it. It's the first one to have an actual Jackson Cross cylinder on it. So American Optical said, you know, we can do that. And they put a Jackson Cross cylinder on it. This is the same as the Design, only it's in quarter diopter steps the way it should have been in the first place. It's got a bigger range. It's way more solidly built. This thing weighs a ton. It's, it's, and it's just really well made. But the problem is it has three instead of four. And this one's in the front instead of being in the back. You don't have to read anything from the back of this one. Those you have to read it off the back, all of them. This is the first one you can read it from the front. They were trying to compete with the Greens Refractor. This is the Additive Effective Power Ferropter. Came out in 1934. Same as the Greens. Now the Depression hit. World War II started coming. Nobody was buying any more Ferropters anyway. So a long time later, after making periscopes for the submarines and all the optical stuff during World War II, they came out with the 590, which is 
a way better. I mean, it's just really smooth. <clears throat> this is flat out AO's attempt to make a greens refractor. Everything's the same. One big mistake they made. See, with the greens refractor, they had their own way of doing cylinder. This is how Dezeng did the cylinder with the with the, with this. This is how Wolf did the cylinder with the needle. You saw that before. And uh, Greens, they had come up with their own internal mechanism, but it goes backwards. When you turn this to the left, the cylinder goes to the right. You want to have, which is better, one or two, you want to go this way. i got to turn this to the right to get that one to go to the left. I don't think too many optometrists are going to appreciate that very much. I don't think the 590 was a big seller. <clears throat> Some of the old optometrists I've talked with say that the best refractor in those days was the Green's refractor. It wasn't until 1956 that AO came up with the real zinger. And I'm not going to even describe this one because it's a modern ferropter. If you give eye exams, if you're, a, I don't care if you're an ophthalmologist or an optometrist or an optical uh, technician, you're using these. It basically hasn't changed since 1956, except they yoked the cylinders in 1967. Um, the modern ferrometer by Dezeng, he wrote this in 1917. It's got pictures. You know, it's got a picture of, you've seen that picture before, that's over there. Then when the Ferropter came out, he wrote another book in 1922, The Ferropter by Dezeng. Quite a guy. When, I, when American Optical bought him out in 1925, they put out the 1927 version and there's the book, The Ferropter by American Optical. Here's an advertisement from Meyerowitz's catalog in 1920. It's got the 560, which is the trial frame, and the 570, which is that top one, side by side. Prices are in the back. Here's a box of auxiliary lenses for the, for the 1927 version. You can see... Well, let me just see. see. those little tiny auxiliary lenses? Those are, they fit in the front of this. And here's a box, a much bigger box, of auxiliary lenses. Look at that. These are just the auxiliary lenses. That's almost like a trial set. It's got cell. That's for this one. They're bigger because they fit in a bigger eye size. That's up to a three-quarter inch eye size. This is nine sixteenths. That's eleven sixteenths. That's three quarters. From there on, it's all three quarters. The means your factor is a little smaller eye size. There you go. Isn't that pretty cool? All these little lenses increase. They're auxiliary increasing cell. All kinds of crazy things. Okay, that should pretty much wrap it up for the American Optical line. And now I'll do another video in a few minutes to show the Greens Refractor.